Hey everyone, today I get to speak to Dan Zidane, CTO of Gamecraft Studios. Let's see what he has to say. Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thanks for having me, my pleasure. <laughs> so in 2017, you made a game called Eliosi's Hunt. In September of 2019, you provided a tutorial of how to make a Pong game. In November of 2019, you made a game entirely on stream with the catchphrase, what if Breakout was the only arcade game people could make? In April of 2019, you released software called VizCode, which is an educational tool and a video series of how to program. And now you're working in a game development studio with your brother, and you are releasing or have released early versions of a game called Rogue Summoner. How the heck do you get so much work done, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a cut away to start, right? <laughs> So when I started making games, I was like, okay, so I think this is it. This is my passion. I started following that. It led me to quite a, quite a, a few different areas, right? And I worked as an intern into a local video game studio because I'm from Brazil. And here we don't have a lot of big, big, big game companies, especially when I started, which was like something like 2016. When I started making games, I was like looking for people to, to learn from, to work with. And uh, it was very, very scarce, the number of studios that I could get a job, especially in my city, which is Belo Horizonte. So when I finally managed to get an internship here, I worked for games for advertisement. So it wasn't quite what I wanted. It wasn't quite like entertainment games, which is like the big thing that I think uh, that I really wanted to, to do. But it was enough to get me started, especially in terms of business. And that was a pretty interesting idea because it was a very small studio and I worked there as a 3D artist. So I was, I was going to create animations and models and things like that. And, uh, but the interesting thing was that because it was such a small studio, I had a lot of contact with you know, everyone who worked there from the, from, this, uh, from the interns like me, all the way to like the guy who would make strategic decisions about how to deal with the studio and how to get money to do the projects and things like that. Things like that. And that really, I don't know, gave me a different view on, on what it takes to make a game in a little bit of a broader sense. And I was very inspired by that experience, by, by internship experience. It sounds like so, incredibly an educational experience. It was. So when I left there, I was like inspired to create my own thing, my own company, so to speak. So that's when I started Iliosis Hunt. I was like, okay, so let's, let's do a game. And that was 2014 when I started Iliosis Hunt. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so let's make a commercial game, but entertainment game. It, it, was, a, it was very complicated because I didn't actually know the, the whole thing that I would expect, right? Because I was mostly an artist back then. Uh, there were some key points, like programming was something that I felt that was re- very hard to communicate and very hard to find people to get, get together and make the game. So that's where I was kind of forced to go to that area. I you had very place. little programming experience before you yeah. embarked on an adventure of creating a 3D video game. That's what you're telling me? No, when you put it like this, I kind of think that wasn't <laughs> the best idea. <laughs> It was kind of a, a weird experience because it was in the beginning of Unreal Engine 4. And for people who are not very familiar with game development, usually people develop a game in a tool called in a game engine. So in Unreal 4, they released a programming language, pretty much, called Blueprints, where you write the gameplay of the game in these little nodes. And that was really appealing to me. And then I started learning from there. So okay. I, I like the idea of node-based programming because it felt approachable. I really had to go a little bit further than that to get the game done. And that's where I think the game suffered the most, especially at the end, because the game released for PC and PS4. And uh, in the end, we were most like, okay, but how do I get this thing done? I had to integrate with middleware like FMOD. So that was really in the very edge of my skills in terms of programming. And I was like, okay, maybe I have to take a step back and really dive into it. So that's what I did after Leo's release. At this point, I found a, a great course uh, called Handmade Hero. Oh, of it's course. Uh, a course by Casey Miratori, yeah. And I fell in love with it, where he teaches the whole process and decides he teaches how to do their own game engines, their own tools, right? This experience of learning this way made me want to do, just like I said, my games from scratch, games that I taught how to program. I think there's a, a little, a small problem with Handmade Hero, if I may say so myself, which is the approachability of the, the experience. Because I set a contrast between uh, blueprints where I could feel like it's easy to get started, easy to start making games, it felt approachable. Handmade Hero, on the other hand, felt like a huge, uh, I don't know, a huge like wall in front of me. And I was like, okay, how do I deal with all that? In fact, I had to watch the beginning of the series three times to make sure that I understand everything and I had to 
redo the, the, the game from scratch three times. So um, my, my, my take on it was to create my Pong game. My Pong game would, would be a very simple game where I would make the, kind of a, the introduction to Handmade Hero. And later on, I created the Break Arcade games, which the idea was to be, okay, I'm gonna do a live stream just like Casey. I was very inspired by him, right? But it's gonna be a very small game where I could like, create in a couple of months. And then the game shipped on Steam. And then I thought, okay, so let's take that to, a, to the next level. You know, when I was uh, creating the, my projects and my companies, my brother had also had, had always been with me in terms of, uh, both in terms of company, but as in terms of programmer as well, because he did, a, uh, he did a computer science in college, right? And I haven't gone to college. I did like a one semester, but I quit afterwards. <laughs> because I don't know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of interesting because you have a PhD degree, right? I do, yeah. And my father has one as well. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, how do I tell my father that I think I'm going to drop out of college, right? So that was a, <laughs> that was a kind of a complicated experience to me. Uh, <laughs> I was dropping out of college to do specific projects, like Iliosis Hunt was the biggest one at that time, right? And then several ones afterwards. When my brother finished his degree in computer science, but he, he loved that business side, you know, because when he, when he joined Iliosis Hunt, he really wanted to explore the possibilities of managing the business. And how, how, do, how do we make a partnership with Sony so we can actually get the game on PS4? And how does that all work? And that was great. And he actually did like a, an MBA later on. So we got together for this code and I was like, okay, so let's create a business where we actually take the experience of learning how to program, first of all, using uh, interactive nodes, but actually goes all the way to the lower level programming that you get from something like Handmade Hero. And uh, it was such a, a huge learning experience because it was like in six months we created the whole thing. So in it told all, all, the, all the projects that I did in this short amount of time. It was pretty interesting because it's evident how we decided to like, Fail fast because uh, Ilios. Sorry, what was the term? What was the term? To fail fast. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we spent three and a half years with Ilios's hunt, and it wasn't a commercial success. I mean, the game didn't pay itself. So, in the second company, which was actually before uh, this whole uh, going back to the game scene thing, right? We actually received investment from a big company here in Brazil, and to create an internship company. So that was pretty cool. That was in two thousand and eighteen. That was before I started making the, the whole go back to games and games from scratch thing. It was a real startup. We had investments and had like business calls and things like that. Uh, it was a very kind of a real experience and we had the investment money. So we wouldn't spend our money, right? In the sense of like a uh, risk. And it was a, a one year project before my brother and I left. So we created the structure of the company, but we felt like we wanted to create, a, I don't know, kind of a more technological things. So we were decreasing the amount of time we spent creating the project, right? So it was three and a half years, then one mm -hmm. year, then it was six months for this code. And then like, okay, if people kind of try the more ludic experiences like video games to teach how to program, maybe we can make this code a little bit more entertaining, things like that. And the more we discussed, the more we thought about going back to the game, the games uh, industry, because like, okay, if the point is to make uh, it a more interactive experience, a more engaging, more entertaining experience. Maybe we, we could open up the markets. And that's where we went back to creating video games now with uh, Game Craft Studios and releasing Rogue Summoner. Rogue Summoner, we, we are just releasing a demo. So yeah, it is still in development, but it's going to be a very short development as well. We are pretty much uh, uh, excited about this. I kind of learned from the first project, which was a long time, three and a half years, right? Because that project was mostly determination. When you're that long in a project, you think about quitting all the time, right? And uh, especially at the end, at the end, I'm not gonna finish it, but I'm like, okay, no, I have to finish it. So that was a pretty strong uh, experience in terms of like finishing projects. You've given me so much to think about. You know, I always say that everybody starts a, prog a project strong, but very few finish it strong. And that's the difference, right? It's very important to me to set out a goal in the beginning of a project. Are you excited about JAI, the language and development by Jonathan Blow? You know, I'm super excited. And it's interesting because it's been so long that uh, <laughs> I've had so much like a ups and downs in terms of like expectation. Because there was a period where I was like, okay, I have to wait for it because it's so awesome. That's going to change everything. I'm not going to do anything before the language comes out. <laughs> I don't think anyone can watch his first video, you know, his first demo right, where he right, right. announces and not right. be super excited because <laughs> that video is so awesome. But right now I'm just, okay, so I'm going to let him finish, you know, his own pace because, you know, he, he's really a master. Because we have no prep, option because right? he takes a no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to- Because he waits until it's amazing finish. before it's released. <laughs> Dan, yeah, is there anything- cool, yeah. Go ahead, sorry, sorry. 
Yeah, it's really cool to see this contrast, right? Because, uh, and it's a little bit of a catch as well, because I'm very young, so I see him working years at his games and his programming language. I was like, okay, so maybe I want to work three and a half years on my game as well, and things like that. But actually, this is only the, the latter half of his story, right? Because there's a first half, which we don't really see, where he failed a lot as well, and where he tried things and didn't, and didn't release, things like that. He got to a point where he can spend a very, a very long time, a very long amount of time on his projects and know that, first of all, there's a, a people waiting for it. And second of all, it's going to be a, a huge quality. Right? Do you want to say anything about Rogue Summoner before we head out? It's really cool because it has a little bit of a different idea in terms of gameplay as well. Because we're mostly programmers. So we want to do like a, a, a very interesting strategy game. So it's a roguelike about technically placing our monsters in a grid. It looks like a board game where there are several monsters, almost like chess, right? Where each monster has a specific behavior. And you set them up and then you let them fight. The cool thing about the game is knowing how each monster will interact with the other monsters as well and change their behavior. The dungeons will be procedurally generated. You're gonna have tons of adventures as well. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be very cool. You can download the demo right now. Uh, it's on HIO and also on Steam. We're just releasing the demo on Steam right now. Uh, but the game will be released later this year. Dan, I'm excited about it too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, I'll place links to all of your projects in the description below. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Well, thank you for calling me. That was a great pleasure.